Hi guys, it's Kelly and I am back with another video. It's been a minute. Um, today we're going to be using some products from Concord 9th. This is the Hello Lovely set and the Love Notes set will be for our sentiment. Um, so I'm going to talk just a little bit about what I'm doing and then this is a super long video with just a lot of watercoloring in it. And so we'll just be rambling on about topics that have nothing to do with card making. If you've never watched any of my videos before, welcome to the show. So basically I'm using Canson um, XL watercolor paper. That's going to be important later. Um, and I am using Antique Linen Distress Ink. The reason I'm stamping this in Distress Ink is because I want a no line watercolor look, i.e. I want this to look like I know how to paint flowers when in actuality I don't know how to paint flowers. I can just follow the stamp outline. I am stamping it twice because watercolor paper is textured and I want to make sure I can see all the little pieces parts. I'm using Distress Ink because they work well with water and it will disappear into the ink that I'm using. It won't change the pigment really at all because it's so light and then it'll look, um, it'll look good. It'll look like I just whipped it up, which I didn't. So this is a Ranger palette. I just use the Daniel Smith tubes, squeeze them into the palette, close the lid, leave them in there. Those tubes last forever in a day. I'm using a number eight round brush from the Silver Brush Company. Typically I would do this with a number two, but I could not find mine. Don't worry, it did turn up. Um, but I also got to kind of see that I could do it with an eight, which was pretty impressive. They come to such a super fine point. Um, it wasn't even really an issue. So you just want to like make sure whether you're using a spray bottle or water droplets that you're moistening the um, paints that you have in there because they, they will dry out. Take a breather and then just dive right in. That's what we're doing. So what I have found that works for me um, is just a more controlled uh, watercolor. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up some pigment, I'm going to put it down where I want it to be the darkest, and then... Um, I'm going to rinse off my brush. I'm doing three petals at a time here because they don't touch. You don't want to work in two areas. The touch, they'll bleed together. It'll be a big old mess. Uh, but I'm going to rinse my brush off and then I'm going to blot the base of my bristles. And then I'm going to go back in with just a super light sheen of water. And then I'm going to take the, um, the water to the pigment. I'm not going to drag the pigment out into the open areas. I'm just going to put it down where it's clear because I want the water to be kind of moving. Um, and then I'm going to just touch that pigment and kind of let it do its thing. You don't want the water to be bubbled up on your surface. That's too much water. Um, you just want it to be just so like when you tilt it in the light, you can see it. That's as much water as you need for this style of watercolor can always go back in and add more pigment. Don't stress about that. We're just getting uh, our base down here on the paper for where our shadows are going to be. So everything is going to be the same. It doesn't matter if I'm doing the teeniest, tiniest little leaf or a big old flower petal. I go about it the same way every single time. Do the, la or the layer of color where you want the shadows to be, just those little lines. Then rinse Blot your bristles, go in with a really light sheen of water. Bring the water to the pigment. That's how it is every time. Now, while it is still wet, you can go in and add more pigment. If your petal dries, like in a lot of cases mine have, if it has dried, you can go back in. Again, you want to use clean water. Just put down the clean water in a light sheen and then again, just go in, drop in more pigment, let the water do its thing. The reason watercolor is so pretty is because the water does its thing. That's it. I mean, I don't think a lot of times, especially for myself, because I'm a little bit of a control freak, um, and I don't mean that as a judgment. I mean, I mean that as an admittance on my own part, because I am. Um, I want to control the water. I want to be able to uh, control where the pigment goes. But the reason it's pretty is because you don't. I mean, you want to control the amount of water that you're using. The amount of water that's on your brush should control all of those things, um, but not necessarily where it goes. Just kind of let it, just let it be pretty. So one of the things that I wanted to do um, with the flowers to just kind of add more interest was I didn't want to do just one color. So each one of these elements in my card, whether it's a a flower, a leaf, what have you, 
Um, basically, we only have flower and leaves. I don't really see any what have you. But anyway, um, so I wanted them to be a little bit more interesting. So for this pink here, I'm going to go back in and add in um, a little bit of like an orangish yellow. I actually mixed the, I think it's it's magenta, I think is the one that I have. Um, and the one time I'm going to try to say it, Quedec, no, it's over. The Quinn Gold, people, because all of you left me super awesome comments and you're like, just say Quinn. Well, I'll know what you're talking about and thank the Lord because I still can't say that word. So anyway, I didn't drop it all over the petal. I didn't drop in a large amount. I dropped in just enough to make it a little bit interesting. And then if I needed to, I went back in with very little water and just blended it out so that it was smooth. I am going to speed up the watercoloring process at this point. All of those were in real time. I wanted you to be able to see the majority of the watercolor painting, um, but in reality, this took me two hours. We're not gonna sit here together on YouTube for two hours. I imagine that you have to like have a family to feed and sleep and maybe you'd like to grab some food and a shower um, and you don't have two hours to just sit here and hang out with me. So I did speed it up just a little bit. This is four times as fast as I actually did it, but I'm doing the same thing again every time. Um, so yeah, just really, I, I know it's more of like a spring card, but um, we had like this frigid, like two week period here and um, then we had like spring in January. I don't go home, Mother Nature, you're drunk. Um, it, it was just so bizarre. It was f like one digit. And then yesterday and the day before, it was like in the 50s, which is unheard of in January in, in Cleveland. Um, I didn't wear a coat to work. I just had on... Um, like a blouse and a blazer and I was good to go. It's just wild. But then today, um, mother, the snow's back with a vengeance. Back with a vengeance. The rain uh, from the 50 degree weather turned into freezing rain. My, I was like so scared for my dog because my whole deck was like a sheet of ice and I'm like, this is gonna be it. She's gonna take a header down the stairs. So I was very, very nervous about that. So we had this nice thick layer of ice and then it, the rain turned into snow and it is still currently snowing as I do this voiceover. Um, thankfully, I am off work tonight, hallelujah, because I don't like driving in the snow at all. I don't really like driving in any precipitation, honestly. Um, but yeah, so I just figured it would be a good night. I got some things to do. I actually cleaned off my craft desk which really, I mean, if you knew me in real life, you would know that that is like a miracle in and of itself that I got anything clean in this craft room because now my desk is clean, but everything else looked basically like an episode of Hoarders because um, I just have too many things and I don't have any space and I don't have anywhere to put them. And I actually, what was that, two, a year ago, a year and a half ago, I actually like hired a professional organizer to come in to organize my craft room. Um, and it was just such a undertaking that, and she needed me. She needed me the whole time. And I just wanted to be like, just get rid of whatever you want. Like I'll make do with whatever's left over, honestly. Like I'll be able to make something pretty with it. It'll be, it'll be fine. Um, she frowned upon that though. And she needed me to be present. And so I took off as much work as I could to get it done. And then we still didn't get it done. Um, and then just some other things in life happened and it just never got done. So I'm very, very grateful um, for the things that come to me, that are, are sent to me for for the companies that I work for. Uh, but I just wish I had such a better organization system. I just don't. And I've always been terrible at it. It's one of my shortcomings for sure. Um, but it just kind of is what it is. Speaking of people sending you things, I had this Hello Lovely set when it first came out it blew up on Instagram. It's a beautiful set. I mean, I don't, who wouldn't want to own this? It's just this gorgeous floral arrangement. It has a beautiful script font. It has um, flowers that you can stamp solid into this image. Um, I'm never probably going to do that because I just love to color. But um, yeah, so just tons of options and it was everywhere. And I was like, I need that stamp set. I need to buy that stamp set. I want to color that flower. I want to color that flower. And then I just never did. I never, I'm sure probably happens to you guys too, or you see something, fall in love with it, and then um, you just don't 
get around to buying it and then you forget about it. That's basically what happened to me here. And then I was talking to um, Angie, who's actually the owner of Concord 9th and is one of my girlfriends. And I was like, I need to get that set. And she was like, don't, I'll send it to you. And I was like, no, 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 I want to buy my own, blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm lazy and she beat me to it. So thank you, Ange, so much for sending me the set because I really do love it. Um, crafty friends are the best. So, but yeah, just, I mean, does that happen to you? Like where you see things and you're like, I really need to get that. And then you either forget about it or you don't get to the craft store or, you know, it just, something else comes along and then you're doing that or assignments or work or, you know, life, just the whole life thing. I was looking for some reason when I, see now here's where we're going to go off on this random tangent that has nothing to do with what I'm doing. Um, so the Hello Lovely stamp set made me think of that song by Stevie Wonder that isn't she lovely song. Um, I'm not going to sing it. I, I know the, I know the words. I'm not going to sing it though. Um, but it made me think of that. And then I was like, for some reason in my head, I automatically associate that with uh, Miss America, the Miss America pageant. I don't know why, because Miss America pageant has a song. They don't play that song. So then I was thinking, was it that um, the Sandra Bullock movie where Miss Congeniality, like, did they play it in there with the pageant? And maybe that's why I connect the two. I am not sure. Though that movie is hysterical and I love me some Sandra Bullock. So if you haven't seen it, even though it's old, I would recommend it. So the pink flowers are done at this point. I've moved on. There's a couple of little smaller ones um, that I'm going to do yellow. I originally did them with a very bright yellow. And then the color that I dropped in there was the Quinn Gold. Yeah, I'm totally adopting that. I'm never saying that word again. Um, so the Quinn Gold was what I dropped back in there. And it was not... Um, it just didn't add enough shading. It wasn't dark enough. So then I went in with the one that I mixed with the magenta and I added that and that seemed to get the deal done for me just so that there was enough um, just kind of shadows and, and a mixture of colors. I'm really not doing, I guess I'm not paying great attention to shadows because honestly, this is so time consuming. I'm just trying to get the ink down on the paper. So I used the bright yellow to fill in the center of the flowers. And then I'm going to move on to the leaves. For the leaves, I used um, sap green. And I did the same thing where I just put the color, you know, down at the base of the leaves. And then I got really, <laughs> I got really annoyed with how time consuming it was to keep rinsing my brush and blotting off the bristles. So basically what I did was I put the green down. I took the clean, clear water up to the edge, but I didn't actually touch it. And then I went back in and did them all at the same time. So that way I didn't have to keep rinsing my brush off so I, you know, didn't drag the color. Because that's the thing. If you touch the pigment first and then pull from there, your entire image is just going to be one solid color. Which again, if you're going for a wash of color um, just over an item, that may be something that you want. It just depends on the look that you're going for. I wanted more variation than that. So that was not the look I was going for. I was surprised um, at how well, you probably heard me mention that earlier, uh, how well this brush performed in such small areas because it is a number eight. It's not a small brush. I mean, it's not huge. It's not like a one inch flat brush, but um, it is larger than what I would normally use. I would normally go straight to that too. And um, it really, it came to a very nice point and made it pretty easy to get into those little areas. And then I also did the um, the stems of the leaves as well with no issue. So these are great. They're, they're um, such good brushes. For the next set of leaves, I wanted to do like a navy, but I didn't have a navy. So what I did was I mixed the ultramarine and the lunar black to make a navy because I just thought that that would be more interesting and kind of more dynamic. Um, I don't know. Oh God, I've been, oh, well, I've been on YouTube a long time, I guess. It was probably like two years ago. I was going to say a year, but I guess it was probably two. Um, I did a watercolor with a rose from Clearly Besotted. That's who it was. Um, and I, maybe I'll link to that so you can see. I'll, I will link to that. I'll hunt down that video for you so you can watch it. It's probably one of my early videos. 
the quality is probably not great. But nonetheless, it's watercoloring. But anyway, I did, it was like a hot pink rose and I did navy blue leaves at the um, advice of Dawn, my girlfriend Dawn. And it was so pretty. I love the way that it came out. And so now I'm all about these navy blue leaves with the pink flowers. I mean, you could probably do navy blue leaves with anything. Because um, again, I've told you, na blue is a neutral to me. So I did notice with these particular, I don't know if it's because it's the lunar black and the ultramarine, darker colors, blues, purples tend to be a bit more granulated, which just means that they don't blend out as smooth and they have a little bit more texture to them. I personally really, really like that look. I think that it's beautiful, um, but I just, I had a harder time kind of blending it out with the water. Also could be user error because I have been used to working in the smaller areas with the tinier leaves. Uh, I could have just not had enough water down. So those I did have to kind of fuss with a little bit. For the largest leaves, I'm going to actually do a teal. I mean, I'm just running the gamut on color on this thing. And I got to tell you, I'm not sorry. I love the way that it came out. I think that it's super pretty and just spring and I am down for that. But I used the um, turquoise to do those. And then this one I got, I did get a little heavy handed, the one on the left there with the... Um, turquoise and so I had to go in and blot up the center because I was making it all one color. For the color that I'm going to drop in here because remember I told you each one kind of has a additional color um, I'm actually going to use a violet. I know that probably sounds a little bit crazy why would you put violet in green um, but once upon a time I was doing a card with distress inks or distress oxides and I actually got some seedless preserves in my peacock feathers and I loved the way that it looked. So now that's just kind of like my, one of my go-tos is like adding just a little bit of purple into my teal if I'm going to do something like this where it's a very painterly. So just getting the, you know, the darker areas and you doesn't always have to be at the base of the leaf or the base of the petal. You can add it to the um, tips of the leaves, which I have done. Um, you can just kind of do whatever your thing is. So now that all the actual watercoloring is done, I'm going to go back in and add in some details. This is not necessary. The piece was just as pretty without it. It's just a different look. So I went back in with the Quinn Gold and added the stamen back in for the flower. I added some detail into um, my leaves as far as like a vein here or there. Um, I also added the stamen back into the um, other pink flowers. For the yellow flowers, I used, I think it's, it's a brown. I'll have to double check what it is. I'll link them. Everything will be linked below on YouTube or on my blog. For those, I actually, um, the little yellow ones, I went in and dotted a couple of little brown dots into their centers. And then um, basically what here's what happened coming up. My husband came home from work and we were talking and chatting and doing all of those things. And I didn't realize my camera was not on. So the only thing that I did here that you didn't see was I flicked on, which I know probably sounds just like absolute lunacy to you at this point because we've spent so much time coloring. I did flick on a few spatters of that turquoise and then I blotted them up in some areas. So some is dark and some is light. The reason I did this is because the way that the stamp set is, is there's already kind of like spatters built into it. And I wanted to work with what was on the page. I'm going to stamp the To You From Me sentiment in um, Nautical Navy from W plus nine. I just thought that um, it was just like bold and it would go with my color scheme. I thought black would be maybe a little bit too much for something this soft. I really liked the way that the navy came out. I thought it was a good pick. Um, it's just a teeny tiny little bit softer than a black. I wanted to accent the sentiment with something. So I used, what did I use? Morning Dew Nouveau Drop. So they just dry clear um, and just with like a, yeah, they're just, it's almost like if you use glossy accents. So you could use one or the other. Um, and then that's it. That's the whole card. So thank you guys for hanging out with me. I will be back more frequently with more videos. It was just kind of a busy week and um, I will catch you on the next one. Bye.